The next one is uh, home unit terminal and will be presented by a team, uh, Aisha, Pratik, Jigar, Junaid, and Muhammad. Hello, hello. All right, uh, hi. Um, our group is called the United Power Solutions, and our project is the home unit terminal. In our group is me, Janaid Malik, Asia Patel, Pratik Jan, Jigar Kumar Doshi, and Mohammed Nakvi, and our advisor is Mr. Mohammed Beknos. All right, our objective is to combine automation in a house in one easy, compact terminal. Uh, basically, we want to automate a house. We want the future of tomorrow today. Um, significance and need. Uh, before we describe what our product is, it's important to know why anybody would buy our product. Home automation today is a luxury product, but we believe as computer is, 20 years, five years down the line, it's gonna be a need. In addition to providing luxury, we are providing remote accessibility, home integration, and power management. Uh, who are our competitors? X10 is basically the industry leader right now in home automation. Uh, what they basically do is use power lines as their communication channel and uh, provide controls to different circuits in the house. Instant is an extension of X10 which uses wireless and home power lines. In essence, essentially, both of them are one-way communication with no brain. Okay, um, like our approach is we want to combine, we want to actually give a brain. So we, we're going to have a microprocessor acting as a brain. See, X10 is just a one-way communication device. Ours is going to be two-way. We're going to have a brain to be able to monitor and control these devices, where X10 is just like a remote control. Uh, we're going to be using a new type of uh, technology, a relatively new technology that's um, come out called Universal Power Bus Line. Uh, power line bus, I'm sorry, developed by power line control systems. How, how, what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a microcontroller hooked up to a modulator. The modulator just plugs right into your, like an outlet in your home. And it broadcasts um, packets of data to devices hooked up to your, just your regular power network. And um, those um, devices connected will be able to identify whether the data is meant for them specifically, and there'll be an argument, and they'll act on that argument. Basically, uh, the modulator uh, uses the AC power line, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, it has a capacitor which discharges at a very specific time in every half cycle of the power line. The position and the position in every half cycle basically gives us another sequence of data, which is which is at four different places. That basically uh, sums up to a 240 bits per second AC cycle. Bits per, bits per second data rate uh, for our module. Right. Um, the, the communication method is just like packets over the internet. Well, when you transmit com um, uh, information on the internet, you send it through packets. And like, like, just like your computer uses, it has, your computer has a destination and a source ID. We have the same method. We're just broadcasting the information through your existing power grid. And this is an example. The data is actually sent in a four-bit system, so your computer uses a two-bit binary system. The modulator converts it into the UPV format of a four-bit system. And here's a block diagram of our um, initial design. You got the microcontroller right in the middle. It's the brain. Uh, it's connected to your personal computer, which you can, uh, you know, put in preferences, uh, play around with all the extra features we can add to it. Um, and we use an RS-232 serial cable to connect to the UPB module, which just plugs into your wall. And that starts sending in the data. What's great about our device, too, since it's a microcontroller, we can add other um, devices that can't communicate through the power line due to various reasons straight into the microcontroller by different methods. And uh, our programming is what really separates us from the competition. Because 
like all um, home automation, sure, we can we load the user preferences. They all do. Uh, we can actually start checking the states of the devices, which the uh, competition mostly cannot. Uh, we can match the states. Um, we begin monitoring. This is the best part because um, let's say every night at 10 o'clock you turn off a light in your living room. Well, the computer will eventually recognize that this is a normal behavior pattern. So one night you forget to turn it off, it'll shut off uh, automatically if you enable this feature. So this is how power management takes place and actually starts saving you money. Uh, specification. Basically, uh, our system is microcontroller hooked up to a modular, which is already av available in the market. What innovation that we have done is we have the module available, which does control all the devices in the house where switching is necessary. We have microcontroller, which is HVAC enabled, meaning it, it is built for home automation. And uh, the data rate is 480 bits per second. It buffers through and gives the necessary uh, controlling enable. Basically, our device is plug and play, meaning we can test it, plug it, plug it to the plug it to your house, test it. If it doesn't work, we go back to the drawing board, try to get it done. This is our milestones and Gantt chart. We have gone through our design design phase. We are going to start our testing and product development next semester. Now we are going now I'm handing over for business. Is it there? Right. Nothing succeeds like success and nothing feels like failure. We know each business can fail but at the same time, we have tried our best through exhaustive research and comprehensive business plan to make sure that we can optimize our profit goals. United Power Solutions has a target of becoming a market leader in the automated housing industry by 2014, which will be a $2 billion industry. According to our psychological, empirical, and theoretical research, we found out and we decided to streamline artificial intelligence as seen in movies with the regular world. Another encouraging fact is that all of us love automation. We love comfort. Therefore, we have like eye touch and different thing. In this regard, we, can, we have divided our product as automated housing industry product in two parts, residential and commercial. The marketing plan will be in, divided into three pa uh, parts and our products will be devices, and services. Future projection is around capturing 30% of the industry by 2014 and having a net cash flow of around 24 million. So, so the mission of our company is going to uh, meet the demand in the market through our product, also be innovative in solving the customer problems. To achieve this mission, we are planning that uh, we'll be uh, we'll do it through high quality service and customer satisfaction, as well as have a user friendly interface and innovative technology. Our core values is customers first, uh, quality and innovation, uh, trust, teamwork. Uh, our, the biggest strength of our company is unique, it has unique integrated system. Uh, one of the biggest weaknesses is that it's a new company, so it's going to take us a long time, uh, it's going to take us a little bit to establish in the market. Our op opportunity is that it's the first step to our artificial intelligence house. And the biggest that we've seen is that uh, is going to be the monopoly of con uh, contractors. It could be a biggest problem. After doing a lot of market analysis, we found that these are the companies which are the major producers in the home automation industry. And these are the features that they provide through the products. The home automation industry as such currently is a multi-million dollar industry. As you see on the right, this is the pie chart which shows a percentage distribution of a target market. On the left is a bar graph which shows the future, future distributions of the different companies, projections of different companies and UPS, our company, in the next five years. Product description. Basically, a product is going to provide wireless adaptability and remote accessibility, thus allowing the customer to access their house from anywhere. 
Also, a product does not require a lengthy installation process. Once you plug it in, it starts. So it's a plug-in -in process. Feature specific f specifications, as mentioned earlier by my colleague Jigar Kumar Doshi, uh, are these. The cost of any product is governed by the value addition that it gives to the customer and the comfort level. Over here, you can see that we have divided our product into three categories. And the categories are compared to the cost of the houses that we are targeting. We're not targeting any small houses. We're targeting houses above 500 to 800,000 and 850 and uh, above houses. At the same time, we are having this commercial aspect, which will be the increase in inflow, like value addition, since we already have the uh, technical design. According to our research, any technical add-on into a house can increase the value of a house by 3%. That, in, only in itself, gives you an additional fifteen to $20,000 boost in your housing price, depending on the, on the type of house you have. And in addition to that, this product can save you around $80 per month in this division. Thus, this product can not only increase your home value, but at the same time can start paying dividends in terms of saving energy costs. This is our marketing plan and division of markets. Over here, this is the first phase where we are going to concentrate on our only contractors to establish ourselves in the market. There are only 300 or 400 contractors listed on NYSE, so we, have, we are going to target them. In the second phase, this thing, the profit rises by 15 to 20 percent. You'll ask why, but the reason is our market opens to the homeowners, which are 102 million homes in U.S., owned homes. And the third phase is like value addition through commercial services, so it is going to increase profit humongously. At the same time, we are going to provide services, which is a continuous source of inflow. Like, for example, if a person buys from us, we're going to have a service contract for upgrading the software, and which can result in continuous yearly inflows and a regular stream of money. So one of the biggest risks we, uh, we foresee is hardware failure and also receive of hardware and also if we, uh, upgradable software. Uh, our future R&D plans is voice recognition. Um, also have a personal website integration where the customer could download it and upgrade their product. And also cell phone communication uh, cap uh, capabilities. As we are going to uh, produce the product in three phases with three different target markets in mind, we are also going to use different marketing strategies for different phases. For example, in phase one, we are going to provide a model for free to home contractors in order they could put it in the model homes, which would give us free advertisement. Also on the right, you see a chart, which is the chart which we are going to use in order to market our product during the initial two phases. Uh, some of the things that we require for manufacturing is capital, capital in the form of money and land, uh, money for in order to get proper cash flow and land in order to set up our industry. Also, we need people, people in the form of engineers to develop our research and development team, good quality check protocols. Some of our pro most of our, pro uh, of our product is produced by external hardware, so we need good quality check in order to see that the external hardware is proper. One of the biggest risks that we have while producing is the current state of the market or the economy. For, because a market is basically home housing development, and if there is uh, a bad sign, we can't sell our product, and the initial phase will have an issue. Over here, you can see our initial financial breakdown. Around we are going to take 800,000 in initial startup expenses and total assets will be around 150,000. The total will be around $950,000 or $1 million approximately. So this is a breakup of investments, assets, loans, and expenses. Uh, one thing in our cash flow, this is a reduced version, which is given in detail in our proposal. This number over here, it is around $24 million. And uh, you can see the first year will be negative. After that, we are going to increase our pro net cash flow. The only reason why I increase this much is due to the inclusion of the third part, where we are increasing the value of the product through commercial uh, product. This is a spider chart for our competitor, main competitor, X10. X as you can see, our company, we cover the entire chart. Basically, we have greater advantage in this uh, 
in terms of the major competition. So we are pretty sure about our success. And uh, in the end, exit strategy, since we know that uh, this industry is a new niche industry, it will attract a lot of people like Sony, Samsung, a lot of companies. So if a big industry com comes into this uh, field, we probably might sell our company or go for merger. If there is no company coming into this field, we will go for IPO, public offering. And I would like to like to thank Dr. Dawan, Professor Fagnes, and then especially all the presenters who came to our class for an idea for their help. Thank you very much.